Gracias Choir. Uh, the choir they will sing three songs: Italian three song, Amapola, and How Great Thou Art. Everyone, please welcome Gracias Choir with big round of applause.
Thank you very much. Let everyone, let us give us another round of applause. When Pastor Park, the founder of Grace Choir, the one thing he mentioned was, you, know, you have to sing for the gospel sake. So whenever they have a concert, we have whenever they have a Christmas cantata, any events, you know, it always follows with the message of God. And God bless them, and now they're the world best. So whatever we do, if we do it for the gospel's sake, then God will always give us grace. You know, the main guest speaker, Pastor Suk Park, and he's been living in spiritual life for more than 55 years. And he only says, he always says the Bible is the only truth, and truth alone. And therefore, the we are now. And let us invite Pesok Supar. Also, he will deliver us the message this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And I knew that they were really good at singing. I mean, I think there's no one in the world that can sing the songs like that. <laughs> I mean, since they came to Australia, they're doing so much better. And I was so moved in the heart. And it's not like we spent a lot of money to go to music concerts. And just with the fact that we can hear these kind of songs, I'm really thankful. And I'm really thankful that God has given us this kind of time to share the words. So today, please go to 2 Kings chapter 5. Please open to 2 Kings chapter 5. And although it may be a little long, I'm going to read from verse 1 to 14. So it's 2 Kings chapter 5 from verse 1. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. There was also a mighty man of Vela, but a leper. And the Syrian had gone out on rage and has brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. But then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus, said the girl, is from the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised when the letter comes to you that I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make a life that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? And for please consider and see how he sticks a quarrel with me. And so it was when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. <laughs> the Naaman went with his horses and chariots, and he stood at the door of Elijah's house. And Elijah sent the messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. And 
그런 대결로 나와서서 그 하는 여가 이름을 불다 저기에 손을 들고 내고 집가에 들어. And I became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hands over the place and heal the leprosy. And at the Adana and the Falpa, the rivers of Damascus, bent it in all the waters of Israel. Could I not wash him then and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. 그 종들이 나와서 말을 해봐. 근데 아버지 선지와 당신을 위한 큰 일을 내가 하나 있지 않으셨습니까? 아버지 당신의 길을 그 길을 시선께 끝나게 하라. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, Wash and be clean? So he went and dipped the seven times in the Jordan according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and it was clean. So we read it up to them. 어, 사람이 만든 여러 가지 기계들 중에 그 중에 하나가 안찜기라고. And there are many, many machines that humans invented, and of them, there is a thing called oscillator, and it produces frequency. 어, 발찜기는 사람들 이렇게 만들냐고. And how do people make the oscillator? 어, 크리스탈을 아주 얇게 조여가지고. And they split the crystal into a very thin layer. 그래서 양쪽에 이제 그 단어를 떼어. And then they put needles on the other side. And then you let the electricity pass through. And that's how the frequency is made. And of course they can implement different ways to do this. And that is called crystal oscillator. And the frequency has a very similar attitude to the light. 전파가 13 테라 사이클을 넘으면 빛이 And when the frequency transcends 13 terabyte sight, then it turns into light. 그래서 이제 이 전파를 발명한 뒤에 사람들 굉장히 중요한 여러 가지 일들을 합니다. And after the invention of the frequency, people could partake in many important things in the human world. 그 전파는 빛의 속도와 같다. And the frequency has the same speed of the light, and basically in one second it can travel 300,000 kilometers. And basically 300,000 kilometers is like the diameter of the Earth times 7. Okay, everyone, I've got a mobile phone here. Yes, yeah, this one mobile phone, right? In order to make one, right, it costs millions of dollars. And in here, it's got a camera inside. And it's got a microphone. And it's got a speaker inside. And also in there is an oscillator. And it produces frequency from the phone. And today this morning I was talking to my wife who is living in Korea. And I was just casually talking to her on the phone. And basically the device that can let me talk to my wife in Korea is massive and enormous. And also in this microphone is an oscillator. And the oscillator in the microphone produces frequency. And as I talk, this microphone receives my voice. And basically, the voice is wrapped by the frequency. Now it's on the signal frequency. And basically, you know, the person at the back, right? The machine there receives my voice through the frequency. And there's a thing called the receiver. So the receiver receives the incoming frequency. And it breaks the frequency. It's like a hammer breaking it down. And when the frequency is broken down, 
then they take out the grains of the poison sites. And they extract the grains of the voice from the frequency and they put it in the amplifier. So amplifier sends it to the speaker. And from the amplifier, it travels all the way to the speakers. And whatever I speak, now you can hear it with a loud voice. And in terms of these in these devices, the phones now we can talk. And in my phone, it's a recorder. And it's got a camera inside. And it's got an amplifier inside. And it's got the oscillator inside. And it's got a microphone. And it's got a speaker inside. And it's got a memory inside. And basically, even though you spend millions and millions of dollars, it's very hard to make one. Millions and millions of people carry this mobile phone almost every day, everyone, and that's why they make money out of it. And then, and that's why they make money out of it. And then, and that's why they make money out of it. And then, and that's why they make money out of it. And then, and that's why they make money out of it. And then, and that's why they make money out of it. And basically, the service providers such as Vodafone, in order for them to really have these things work, and they make this the, the, the station, and they set up the antennas very, very high. And they can receive all the incomings of the frequency nationally. And what they do is splitting those frequencies into smaller pieces. And they analyze the voice inside. And what they do is sending those voices to your mobile phones. And we just sit down casually, we just pick up the phone, hello, hello. In order for me to send this frequency to my wife, and first of all, the service provider in Australia, it has to receive my incoming voice. And that station in Sydney receives my incoming voice and it sends through the frequency and it sends all the way to Korea. And even though you throw your machine very far, it can't go all the way to Korea. And basically it's going to cut off in the middle. Can't really work well. And that's why they send so hard that its frequency runs all the way to Korea. And the station in Korea, they receive this incoming frequency. And now it's transferred into the station in Seoul. And from Seoul, they receive the incoming frequency. And they transfer my voice into my, my, my wife's mobile phone. Hello. Oh, hey, honey, how you going? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, this morning, I spoke to my wife. 내가 오래 전에 우간다에서 집회를 하는데. You know, a long time ago, we had a Bible seminar in Uganda. 저는 주로 이제 해외 가면 잠을 어떻게 자느냐 하면. So now usually when I go overseas, this is how I sleep. 한국 밤에 한두 시간 자고. So now in Korean night time, I sleep for two hours. 그두 시 밤에 두 시간 이렇게 네 시간 잠을 자요. And then I sleep two hours in the city's night time, so it's four hours in a day. Do you know why I do that? And that is the best way that you can take to cope with the jet lag. And basically I was sleeping in the two hours of the Uganda night time. And in the daytime, I had to sleep again. And basically, I had to sleep for at least two hours a day. And yeah, during the daytime, right, I had to meet the cabinet ministers, and there were many schedules completely occupied, and I was not able to sleep. You know, when I was young, right, it was completely fine with me. And 
And as I get older, right, every two hours was completely fine to sleep, but then these days, right, during the daytime, I have to stand on my feet for at least six to seven hours. And then my legs began to become really, really swollen. And I usually, on normal days, I'm completely fine with it, but then if I stand on my feet for a long time, my legs get swollen up. And when I came here, and it's when I went to Fiji, right, my legs were really swollen up. In a hotel where I lodged, there was a swimming pool. And I went swimming in the morning. And all the swollenness disappeared. And I said, hey, honey, all the swollen things on my legs, they were gone. Should I show you my legs? And I said, man, I'm, I'm fine. You know, that's how I could talk. Do you understand all? And this is something that we all can understand. So now, for instance, you know, forbid to get all the way to that signal station in Korea. And it doesn't, the signal does not go all the way to the signal station in Korea. And basically, the pictures and the voice will be sent to the signal station in Sydney first. And they receive this incoming frequency and they send it to the international signal station. And basically from the international signal station they send it all the way to Korea. And in Korea, the international signal station in Korea will send my signal all the way to Korea. And, so, and from Seoul signal signal station they will send my frequency to my wife's phone. And that, and that way it is possible for me to speak to my phone. So now today what I wanted to tell you is And now that the commander is leprosy was healed And that is the result Do you all understand? And do you guys know how he was able to get his leprosy healed? And first of all, he needed a man of God. And who is the man of God? And it was a little young girl from Samaria. Is that right? And that little young girl ran through the principle of God. And she was taken as a captive by the hands of Naaman the commander. 맞아요. Is that correct? 맞죠. Is that correct? And she waited on Naaman's wife. 그렇죠. Is that right? And while she was restricted in that house, she was able to find that the Naaman the commander had a leprosy. It doesn't mean that she only knew that Naaman had leprosy. And she knew that if he goes to Elijah in Samaria, he can be healed. And the little young girl, she was completely aware that Naaman the commander could be healed of his leprosy through the man of God. But then did Naaman the commander know this fact or not? He didn't know. And what about Naaman's, Naaman's wife? Did she know it or not? She didn't know either. And if this little young girl keeps her mouth shut, can Naaman's wife know this fact? And can Naaman know this fact? And all day long, right, basically through until he dies, he's going to die as a leper. And basically God, he desired to work through them and he wanted to be glorified. And basically according to the plan of God, this little young girl was taken as a captive. For example, if you are taken, cap taken as a captain, <laughs> right? Right? Why? Look at all these non believers, they're completely fine, but why am I taken as a captain? I want to see my mom. And until I die, I have to be a slave. And then my master is a leper. What if the leprosy transmitted to me? 
She was probably the unspeakable destruction and despairing heart. Listen to me carefully, please. And there has not been anything that was not done by God. And there is a country called Swaziland in Africa. Do you know this? And basically the name has been changed into Eswatini. Why is that? Because Swaziland has a very similar name to Switzerland. And the royal king in the country received salvation. How was the king, his majesty, able to receive salvation and hear the gospel? And the story is very simple. My daughter, she loves music. And my daughter, when she finished her high school, she really wanted to go to music university. And in Korea, right, to study music in the university is very, very expensive. And don't be surprised. And if you want to have a private lesson with a very good pianist, it costs $1,000 per hour. So where is the pianist sister here? Yes, yeah, she's there. How much is it now per hour? It's about $700 to $800 per hour. But it goes more than $1,000 too, right? Yes, thank you. And my daughter, she was not able to afford to go to the music university. And then my wife, my daughter, after she went 30, she got into the university. St. Petersburg, the music school. Do you understand? And my daughter, she studied music there, and now she's leading Grouch's choir. And my daughter, right, she really wanted to study music, but it was too expensive. And do you know what she thought? And there are people who are really talented in music, but they just can't afford to study. And she came up with this plan to build a school where people can study with low cost. And I went to Fiji this time. And many people in Fiji were requesting me to build a music school there. And then I spoke to them. My, do my daughter, she built a school called Sesori Music School. So Sesori means like the sound of the birds. <laughs> so now she built a school. And developing countries like Africa and some other countries, right? She's now getting it ready so she can do the music schools. So now, Park Jin Young and Park Hyo Jin, right? The ones who sang on the stage, they're just soprano. She was singing the songs of Delilah, right? Yeah, honestly speaking, right? She was not really good at singing. But now she's so good at singing now. I'm pretty sure throughout the world there are not many people who can really catch up to her now. And especially since she came to Australia, she's so good. You know, when she was singing Samson and Demira, I was completely melted. Like seriously, she was really good at singing. And in America, there's a city called Seoul City. And there's a headquarter of Mormon Church. And we went to Seoul City. And we 
they crash as quiet performances. And then what the MC said. And Grash as choir is officially the world's best choir. And in Seoul City, right, there was a choir of Mormon Church. And they were laughing. Mormon Church choir is the world's best. And Grash's choir did performances. And they were completely startled. The Mormon choir is not even comparable to Grash's choir. And if you want to know it, right? Go to YouTube and type in Mormon choir. Just, if you just listen to it, you will not be able to tell. And you can listen to Grash's choir as well. And what they sing and what we sing, they're completely not even comparable. So when Grash's choir learns music, before they learn how to sing, they develop their <laughs> ear function to hear. And usually, generally speaking, when they adjust the piano, and then please adjust it to 4-4-2 cycles. And what does that mean? Basically, when they, when they hit the basic note, it has to be 4-4-2 cycles. So now usually, like in the normal sort of choirs, right, if they go up to 443 or 442, usually they say that's pretty okay. But then from Gracia's choir, right, they develop their ear function. And they pull their ears off somehow and they make themselves listen better. <laughs> and they learn how to discern 443 cycles and 442 cycles. That is 1442. <laughs> and basically, while you're singing, you should be able to tell what you are singing is 442 cycles or 443 cycles. And for them, for moments, moment choir, when they sing, everything is all dispersed. And for Grouchy's choir, right? there are so many members, but it sounds like they're singing as one person. <laughs> yes, in moment choir, they're like, we are the best, they were flattering, but after hearing our songs, they were just all low spirit. And basically they said, oh, please do the performances with us from the Soviet city, we got a demand. And in the world of the spiritual life, what is there? And there are people who received faith in the spiritual life. You know the little young girl, right, from Samaria, she was very little. But she had faith in her. Oh, our Naaman the commander. And if he goes to Elijah, and if she had faith in the heart, he can be healed of his leprosy. But Naaman's wife did not have faith. And Naaman did not have faith either. And if Naaman the commander raised 10 years ago, if he had that faith, According to the faith, right, he would have healed his leprosy. So the interesting thing here is, and on the phone, on the device, you say, hello, hello, you're yelling. And if your phone is not connected to the signal station, and I can say, honey, and she will not be able to hear me at all. But as long as I'm connected to the signal station, from this station to that station, from that station to that station, and she can reach my signal. And now we all have the thing in the first. And the first signal station is, was the little young girl. And the second signal station, was Naaman's wife. And the third signal station, was Naaman the commander. And Naaman the commander, there was no way that he could hear the voice of God. And however, by means of the providence of God, 
잡혀 남아 집에 포로 가요. The little young girl she was taken as captive and now she waits on Naaman's wife. 지금 하나님 나만 잡으는 병을 고치게 기지고 세우는 거지. 그죠? And that God was establishing the signal stations so he can heal Naaman's leprosy. 맞습니까? Is it correct? 그 계집종이 뭐라고 말합니까? And what the little young girl say? 우리 주인이 나만의 아내에게 우리 주인이 사마리아에게 선자에 문을 나 나를 뭔지 몰라요. 난 지식 And if my master can see Elijah, the prophet of God in Samaria, maybe there is a high possibility, or it's plausible that he can be healed. Actually, I shouldn't say like that, but for sure, with certainty, he will be healed. You know that word, right? When Naaman's wife heard it, that's a damn thing. なんすよ、ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ。ステップ
do not get beaten. And this little young girl, she had faith in the heart. If my master can see the prophet of God in Samaria, he can be healed of the leprosy. And this little young girl, she, let's say she received that signal and she keeps her mouth shut. And the will of God cannot be accomplished. And then why was the little young girl taken captive in Naaman's wife? Naaman's house. That is so, Naaman could be healed in order for God to save you. God made us like the Bible says we were in Sydney, CLA. And basically everything is happening in series in order for you to receive salvation. As the park had to be on the airplane. Amen. Amen. And everything is all related. And when you read the Bible, right? And in that signal station. And if that signal station was interrupted, then Naaman the commander would have died as a leper. And Naaman's wife heard what the little young girl said. Hey, be quiet. How can somebody yell leprosy? Don't say something so useless. I mean, if God is really alive, why are you here as a slave? I mean, Israel should have prevailed. And don't say things that are completely useless. And if she said that, the things would have all been interrupted. Do you understand? From the little young girl as a signal station, her frequency was then transferred to Naaman's wife. And the signal station in Naaman's wife was transferred to Naaman. And Naaman heard it. Uh, what a useless thing. And doesn't mean we have no profit in our country? Stop saying things that are useless. What, what are they talking about? This is all good. And if he said that, then that was it. And by means of this kind of close relationships, the words can be preached. And the signal stations, right? And let's say this phone, and this phone right through the words. And through the phone, your hearts can be transferred to the others through the verbal way. And now, can you actually feel that God is doing all these signal station things in your heart so He can transfer His heart to you? Amen. Amen. And there are times when you work as a signal station. Oh, you know, how can I preach the gospel? I don't think that's right. Then that's problematic. And once you understand the will of God and speak clearly to the people, then God works in a very precise manner. Then things are really, really amazing. Here, right, we have a uh, pastor Nam Gyeonghyun from the Philippines. So now, where is Pastor Nam Gyeonghyun's son? Has he run away? <laughs> where is he? Where is he? He's gone. And the one day I called Pastor Nam Gyeonghyun from the Philippines. And his son picked up the phone. Oh, oh there he is. <laughs> oh, I'm going to look is. <laughs> Stay there. <laughs> yeah, his father is very good looking too. <laughs> yeah, apparently, has the handsomest genetics in there. <laughs> and I knew I called, right? <laughs> and he picked up the phone. Hey, <laughs> can I speak to your father, please? <laughs> oh, my father's not here. He's in the, he's in the hospital. <laughs> what? Like, why? Dengue fever. It's called dengue fever. Dengue fever. Do you guys know what dengue fever is? Yes. And usually you get this from the tropical areas. So in Australia, I'm pretty sure you guys don't have dengue fever. Mortality rate more than 90%. It's a very scary disease. They call it dengue fever. 
This is a general I ask you which hospital is he on? Philippine, Philippine Medical Center. And it's the uh, Philippines Medical Center. And then I called Pastor Nam Kyung Hyun. And I don't know the phone number of the Philippine Medical Practical Center. And then I called and I basically tried to call this uh, phone exchange person. And I please speak, give me the phone number. And I spoke. Medical Center, please. Uh, please transfer me to Medical Center, please. The single exchanger and transfer me to Philippine Medical Practice. Philippine Medical Center, the receptionist in Philipp Philippine Medical Center. Medical Center. This is medical prep, medical center. I see you, please. And then I said, I see you, please. And basically, ICU stands for Intensive Care Unit in the hospital. And he was in ICU. So through the uh, international exchanger, the signal exchanger, I was connected to medical practice and they transferred me to ICU. ICU is ICU. And ICU picked up the phone and said, ICU. And then I said, I'd like to speak to the Korean missionary. Please, Pastor Nam. And I don't speak English very well. That's all I could say. And then after the noise, I saw Pastor Nam Gyeong's wife. She picked up the phone. You know, that day, right, Pastor Nam Gyeong's wife, later I heard, and basically the Filipino doctor in Tagalog, and he was looking at Pastor Nam. This Korean guy is going to die tonight. You know, they were speaking in Tagalog and she could hear it. And she, he thought that the, uh, the, they could understand Tagalog. So basically passed the day, he could not speak, but he could hear. And his fever was getting high. He was dying. And then I talked to him, right? So as a Philippine um, the Kyohan, the Philippine as a medical center, medical center, I see you, I see you as a Tamosani. And basically from Seoul, from Seoul to International uh, Phone Exchanger, and from there to Philippine Medical Center, from Medical Center to the ICU, I see you to pass the map. And in that stage, right, things worked in series. And then I said, hello. Pass the name's wife, she, she, uh, she uh, recognized my voice. She was yelling and she was weeping. Pastor, what do we do now? And what are we supposed to do now? And in the pastor's wife's heart, the pastor was already dead. And the doctor said that he's going to die. And the pastor then, he went to the jungle to preach the gospel. And on the next day, in the morning, and his skin all around the body turned black. And without knowing this, right? The Philippine brothers and sisters, they're like, oh, pastor, we have the same skin color now. And basically that phenomenon happens because the blood dies underneath the skin. And they went to the hospital. And the, the, the doctor tied up his forearm. And this black liquid was coming out from the skin. He was dying. He was dying. And this pastor's wife, she was in despair. And she just kept on crying on the phone. Pastor, now what do we do? That's what she was saying. And then I spoke to her. Do not cry. Why are you crying? Don't cry. She was not able to see his cry. Stop her from crying. And I said something really terrible. Stop crying. Do you really want something to cry for? <laughs> she stopped crying. She stopped crying. Pasanam is not going to die. That's what I told her. Pasanam was like, really, will that be? 
그럴까요? 뭐야? 안 죽어. What do you mean by will that be? He's not gonna die. Who sent Pastor Nam Kyung Hyun to the Philippines? Was it Pastor Opsi Park? Or was it Good News Mission that sent him there? Or is it IYF? No. It was God who sent him there. Amen. And why did God send Pastor Nam to the Philippines? So he can preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. You know, for Pastor Nam, it is not time for him to die. Because in the Philippines, we still have a lot of time to preach the gospel at every corner. We still have a lot of things to be done. He is not going to die. And I have faith in my heart. And after I heard that Pastor Nan was on a mission in the medical center, and then I knew that he was in Philippine Medical Center. Through the mediators, right? I could reach through the Philippine Phone Exchange. I was transferred to medical practice, and I was transferred again to ICU. And I was transferred to Pastor Nan's wife. We were all connected. And I was just holding a phone in Korea, that's it. And then I could not speak to Pastor Nam himself. And he was in a condition where he could not pick up the phone. He could hear, but he was not able to speak. He was dying. For me, right? I read the Bible. Jesus, when he meets people, Jesus put help in their hearts. In John chapter 8, I've read the stories about the woman caught in adultery. Do you know what Jesus gave to the woman caught in adultery? And as I was reading John chapter 8, the woman caught in adultery, and there are many, many secrets and mysteries that are hidden. And one day I searched the heart of the woman caught in adultery. So this woman caught in adultery when she was committing adultery. And what do you think she was feeling in the heart? You know, this woman, she was committing adultery. And the lustful heart was filling her heart. Is that correct? And she was caught in the act of adultery. And now she was being dragged to be stoned to death. People spat on them. They were trampling her on the feet. They were holding her by the hair. You filthy woman! Because of you, right, the whole country is defiled. They were holding the stones in their hands. I'm going to stone you to death. At that very moment in the woman's heart, her heart was filled only with fear. So now the people brought this woman to Jesus, right? And they said, teacher, this woman was calling the act of adultery. And Moses said that such a woman should be stoned to death. What do you say, teacher? But Jesus stood down and wrote on the ground with his finger. And he raised himself up and said, he who is with that sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. There was no one, absolutely no one that could dare stone her. And they dropped the stones from their hands and left. And only the woman and Jesus were left. And then Jesus spoke to the woman. Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? Still no one knows. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. She was sent away. And in the woman, right? When she was sent away by Jesus, and I try to see her heart. And all the rest of the people there, they try to stop me to death. And they all hated me. And they try to kill me because I committed adultery. 
that Jesus loved me so dearly. That Jesus loved me so dearly. Such a woman like me, I'm leaving now. In the woman's heart. And her heart was overflowing with thankfulness towards Jesus. And while she was going away, teacher, thank you. I'm so thankful to you, thank you. It's completely unspeakable that she's going away. She turns back, teacher, I'm so thank you. Jesus said, go and sin no more. When this woman wants to commit sins again, so now for you, right, if you don't have lustful hearts in you, you cannot commit adultery. And when you steal, if you don't have that theft heart, you don't want to steal anything. And when you hate somebody, you have the hatred in you, that's why you hate somebody. And when you love somebody, you have the love in your heart. Jesus. In the heart of the last woman. And I try to calculate the time since this woman and Jesus probably less than 30 minutes. Within that less than 30 minutes. You know, the lustful hearts and fearful hearts in this woman's heart now are all gone. And her heart is filled with thankfulness. And every now and then I go to America. And my son lives there permanently. And my son has got three children. And so my daughter is with one child. And I've got four grandchildren in total, and they're all studying in the US. And when they're little grandfathers, buy me some hamburgers. And I take them all to the hamburger store. What do you want? You know, they're the friends, right? And also, I'm Pastor Pakbang wants me on a And in America, they've got a lot of children. At least three or four per family. Like 10 or 15, the whole squad we're going. And then the father's going to. And then the older sister's going. I'm going to. So in a group of like 20 people, we eat hamburgers together. And as I say, right, we're taking so much time and we're having enjoyable time to eat hamburgers. And they don't just sell hamburgers. They sell coke. And they sell other beverages. And they've got other things as well. And the children are so enjoying it. They really are happy. Right? They eat hamburgers and they're so joyful. So now these kids, right, when they eat the hamburgers. And for me, right, the smallest one, I can't even finish the whole thing, just half of it. My grandchild, big back. Like, this big. And after they finish eating the hamburger, and I tell them, so do you want to do you want to eat pizza? Oh, no, no. Ice cream, Do you want some more ice creams? Oh, <laughs> Grandpa, I can't eat anymore. Yeah. Do you understand? That's exactly right. <laughs> if you eat hamburgers, your belly is so full. Should I buy you some beef? Do you want some pizza? There's no room in your belly. What does that mean? Yes. Jesus. Yes. In the hearts of the woman. Her heart is filled with the thankfulness. There is no room for the lust for hearts to go in. Amen. Amen. And her heart is filled with the thankfulness. <laughs> what about hatred? Is there room for that? And she has no intention to come in sins anymore. And that's how Jesus works. And if you say, don't come in sins, just go. That's not what he did. But he said, go and sin no more. <laughs> the thankfulness was so much in her, and she's like, oh, I can't. Good luck. And even that way, right? <laughs> and basically, there's no room, no indices at all, the last <laughs> part to go in. Right? <laughs> Should I buy you some more pizza? <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's full. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, we are. 
Jesus gave you hope, faith, and thankfulness fully in your heart. And what's amazing is, and you transfer that joy to the others. And as you transfer this joy to the others, let's say I have $100, and I give $50 to someone else. And how much do I have left? I got $50 left. But joy is weird. Let's say I have $50 worth of joy, and I have $100 worth of joy, and I give $50 worth of joy. It becomes $150. And the property of joy increases. Isn't it weird? Amen. Amen. And the spiritual life is so much fun. Really, it's fun. Pastor Nam's wife, she believed my words. Pastor Nam is not going to die. God who sent him to the Philippines. Has there tons of stuff to be done in the Philippines? Told him that. Pastor's wife, she believed the words. She ran to the words as fast as she could. And she told me exactly word for word what I told her. From then on, the fever reduced. Amen. He's so healthy now. Was it on the day after that he discharged? After two days he discharged. He discharged after two days. And the work of the gospel of Royce significantly in the Philippines. Really. Last year, we did my education for the teachers there, 60,000 teachers in the Philippines. That's what we did. We were talking about it. But Yusef Dian is in the Philippines. So last year was it Yusef University? Yusef Dian is in the Philippines. So we did that in Yusef University. And as we did that in Jamboree University. And this year, together with about 20,000 students, and it was hosted by Takum City. And from Takum City, they supported financially. And the mayor of Takum City, he received salvation. So the mayor's older sister's husband came to Korea and received salvation. And that's how we were connected. So at the same time, when we hosted this camp in Takum City, and it's not just from Takum City, but four other mayors in the neighboring cities came. So please, there's a place to the same thing in our cities too. And I'm so glad that we have what we call airplanes. Because on the airplanes, right, we can't cancel too. So when we first landed in Swaziland, and all the music school students, and they went all the way to Swaziland to do volunteering. And as our music school students were, and their ear functions well developed, and they can hear the songs in the correct way, so they can duplicate the same songs. And one day the student right? And it was on the graduation day of the National Swaziland University. And they said, okay, why don't we go there and sing for them? And a number of students went there. Oh, uh, you know, we are from music school in Korea. You know, today's the day of graduation and we are here to congratulate you. President Chai said, no, you can't sit here. Why? Because today, on the day of graduation, the royal king, his majesty, is coming. And yesterday, we already gave the program schedule to him. And he's already seen it now, and there's no way we can change the schedule. And it's okay. Okay, we'll just append it then. 
근데 그 책임자가 이야기했어요. The person in charge said it. 지금 사람들이 다 왔는데. Well, all the people are here anyway. 부왕폐왕 오실 아직 안 오셨다. Well, the, the, His Majesty is not here yet. 부왕폐왕 오시기 전에 노래 부르면 돼. Well, only until he comes, you can actually sing here. 원래. Will you do that? Yeah, 좋아요. Oh yeah, might as well. Yes. 몇곡 부를까요? Okay, how many songs should we sing? 세곡 불러. Okay, three songs then. 그 학생들이 와서 and the students went there. 수천이 모인 졸업생들 그 다음에 졸업 가족들 다음에 그, 그 학교 사람들 모인 학교를 And on the day of graduation, there were students, parents, and all the school officials and the personnel that were all there. And they were singing. Yeah, but then they were singing so well. 노래를 한 반쯤 부르는 and almost on the, 첫째 노래 반쯤 부르는 And almost on the halfway through of the first song. 고함표가 앉아서 The king is majesty king. 그냥 고함표가 아무 말도 안 하고 그냥 어제 앉은 노래를 들었어. He didn't say anything. He just took a seat and he listened to the song. 그 학생 두 곡을 더 부르고 마지막에 As they read, they sang the rest of the two songs. 졸업식 끝났어요. And the graduation was over. 고함표가 앉아서 The king. 아까 그 학생들. His majesty said, bring those students here. 고함표가 앉았어요. They went to the king. 모든 동 who are you? Well, no, I'm not from Korea. Oh, you know, we are the students from music school from Korea. Why no more songs? You know, for the king, right? You're so adorable. I put you in the army, no. And you have to ten days, sir. We have to study how I work. We study how to do music. Oh, we're gonna establish our music school here in Pasar Oksu Park. It's coming. Why we have to do all the work? And the king is in majesty, right? He was so moved by the students. They are Swaziland. When I arrived, it was at an international airport. Somebody, the cabinet minister came to see, and they treated me as a VIP, national VIP. You were in the Fiji as well, sir. You know, this time as well in Fiji, right? I was treated as a national VIP. You know, from the government, they lent us cars. You know, from Nandi, from Fiji to Nandi, right? And the police car was escorting us. You know, that's what they did for us. And the cabinet minister told me, So tonight at 6, And then basically there's a meeting with the king's majesty, and it was organized by himself, and you have to come. I said, okay, okay, sure. And then how long is the meeting time? 40 minutes exactly. And I was like, you have to know exactly how long you can speak. So that way I can keep my punctuality. And the next day, the meeting time started with the king. You know, that day this afternoon, right at 4. And then I went to CLF and I was doing a lecture for about 300 pastors. And on the second day, right, I mean, on the second thing, we try to move on to the next schedule and I got a call. And it was four in the afternoon. And the king is looking for you. And then I went to the king's palace. And basically in the king's palace there was a hall that was bigger than this. And he was sitting at the front. And then we all had to crawl from the gate. And I was about to crawl too, right? <laughs> well, you know, when I was in the army, I learned how to crawl really well. You know, but then the general secretary told me, the foreigners don't have to follow this rule. And then I sat next to the king. I talked to him and it took probably 10 minutes. And I said, why do you think God made me see the king? So I can preach the gospel to him. I preached the gospel to him. For about 30 minutes, probably. And as of the time, it was already 40 minutes. And then I stopped speaking. And his majesty was staring at me. And he was staring at me. I couldn't see his eyes. And I finished preaching the gospel in 30 minutes. And his majesty told me, Tell me more. Well, another 30 minutes, preach the gospel. Tell me more. He told me three times, so in total of one and a half hours, I preached the gospel to him. And the royal king received a salvation that day. And basically, God works as a mediator and he does his works. 
and that His Majesty reigns. And after we finished preaching the gospel, and He said, "You are a truthful servant of God. I will give you some land." Build IYF centers. Build your church in the land. Build your house in a fancy way in the land. Come more often. And basically, the royal praise meeting, right? He invited me. And there, I preached the gospel again. In Swaziland, right in the country. And now they are basically in discussion with me in terms of curriculum of the education system. And then we decided to do my education in the country. And God has been working consistently. And we don't know anything. Why am I here as a captive? What have I done wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. I received salvation up until serving God. Look at this long deliverance, they're completely fine. Why am I here as a captive? This is not making any sense. So maybe she felt despondent in the beginning. And this young girl, she was a precious daughter of God who believed in God. She was able to have a pair of eyes which other people could not have. My commander is a leopard. But if he sees Elijah, the prophet of God, he can be healed. And he was really healed, right, when he came back home. And then I thought about it. And there are two women in the house. Mama's wife and the little young girl. So I'm pretty sure she's a wife of the commanders. I'm pretty sure she's very pretty, right? And she's a very high position. She has a lot of money. She has no lack. And two women, they're living in the same household. One is a wife of the commanders and one little young girl. And this little young girl, she's a captive. And for the rest of her life, she has to be there as a slave. And she was very miserable. And Lyman's wife, she's always worried. Oh, you know, the past is whizzing out too much. I can't even sleep with him anymore. And also these days, right, his fingers are all hard and dark. And he can't even wield his sword. And if people know this, then we might get kicked out. And how shameful will that be? And all the time, she was worried, anxious, worried, and anxious. Little young girl, oh, if my master can see the prophet of God, he can be healed. And if he sees the prophet of God in Samaria, he can be healed. He can be healed. And once he's healed, he'll not be worried anymore. There'll be happiness in this house. I should probably tell them. And what will happen if I do tell them? And then the commander went, and he really came back home healed. And the post story is not written in the Bible. You think at your discretion. Right? I thought at my discretion. And the commander's like, hey, let's go home quickly, as quickly as is possible. It came back home. And even before the chariot stops completely, he's like, honey, look at me, look at me here. If I didn't have you, I would have been just a leper. From today, you're my daughter. You're my daughter now. You're my daughter now. Father, let us study 2 Kings chapter 5. 
Yo, that's gonna be so great, right? And every day they sit down and do the Bible studies. And on the next day, and then he'll gather up all the other commanders. Today, I've got a very important thing to say. I don't know whether you know this or not. Until now, I used to be a leper. And people would be like, what? Really? 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 Yeah. We have a little young girl in my house. She's my daughter. And I, my leprosy is all healed. Look at this. And there is really God in Israel. From today on, in the promotion exam, mind education, <laughs> education and the curriculum. <laughs> you have to pass the exam so you can be promoted. And from today on, if you do not receive forgiveness of sin, and we will have to give supplementary exams. <laughs> and you testify how he received salvation, how his leprosy was healed. Well, this story is not written in the Bible, really. Now, let me tell you something that is not in the Bible again. My daughter, right? So now in Korea, there are many women with the suki. And I say, hey, suki. Hey, come over here. Hey, daughter, in the Bible, I don't understand what it exactly says. Ah, oh, father, that's so easy. And you don't know that? I just read it here. Oh, yeah. I forgot about it. In the last time, right, in our country, there are two cabinet ministers, right? Did you know that they actually came to my house? Oh, yeah, I do. And then he came with a son, right? He's 28 years old. And he wants to marry you. Oh, God, that's shameful. They got married. And now where is she going? And as she's going to the in-laws family. And she goes to Samaria. Israel. And she's now in a chariot. And she's wearing a very fancy clothes. And she's booked. She's got all these presents for the mother and the father. And she's going on the way. And the father doesn't know this. And then she he was just outside the house. And there's a very fancy chariot coming. Wow, that looks like a chariot of a king. And a young couple gets out. Wow, look at them, they look so fancy. Oh, the bride looks very similar to my daughter. Oh, I wonder where my daughter is, what is she doing now? It's his father. I don't, know. I don't think you know me. Father, it's me. It's Suk. Ah, Suk. How amazing will that be, right? I'm pretty sure there's so many amusing stories like that afterwards. And if you're in God, a lot of precious things. So now the important thing here is, and it is actually very important. So now there are people, right, who find the spiritual lives a little difficult. So now raise your hand, I find my spiritual life very difficult. It's okay, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Put your hands down, thank you. So there's only one reason, really, in your spiritual life. Why do you find your spiritual life difficult? So now Nama the commander, he went to Elijah's house, right? So now he went to Elijah's house. And Elijah. And he said, you go to the Jordan and dip yourself seven times, then you shall be clean. But then, then, the Naaman, the commander, he was furious. 
And I traveled all the way from Syria to here. You should have at least offered me a cup of tea. And even, I can't even see the actual man of God. I should not have come. In Damascus, the rivers are much cleaner. I can wash myself there. And that was his thought. And his thoughts and the words of God. And that's why Satan always within our heart. And whenever you are bad to believe in the words of God. And Satan gives you the thought, your thought. And then he was really furious. I mean, like for him, right? Why is he so angry? He just had to dip himself seven times in the Jordan. And it is all because he was arrogant. And he had that sort of heart. And he was turning away in a rage and he was about to go back to Damascus. Then we need a signal station that can really prevent you from doing that. My father, if the prophet has told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more when he just says, go dip yourself and wash them off? Amen. Amen. And when he heard that, and I'm in the and he washed himself seven times. Once, twice. Six times, seven times. And then he had his eyes closed. Am I healed? Ah, oh, Commander! You're healed! You're healed! You're healed! You're healed. You're healed. <laughs> is it my hand really? Why is it so clean? Oh, everywhere is clean. She was very jubilant. So simple. Not the words of God. Satan gives you these evil thoughts. Adam and Adam too. He heard two voices simultaneously. The voice of God and the words of Satan, the serpent. And God told him not to eat the fruits of the knowledge of good and evil. And the serpent said, eat it. And Adam. He had to trample the words of God on the foot. And he refused the words. And he was cursed. And we are his descendants. And Satan, the serpent, is always deceiving you. You have no faith. That's not working for you. It's not going to work for you. Why is it not working? Because you hear two voices simultaneously. And when I was in the army, I was a radio soldier. And then with the worst coat, we were communicating. And mostly we do it with numbers. One is tall, like shortly. Four long signals, and that's one. That's one. And two. That's two. 3 
they had to carry the radio behind their back. And just the battery itself was 10 kilograms. And they were carrying a radio. And the radio itself was about 8 kilograms too. And when the radio and the battery in the back, they had to run so fast. And then the Vietnam soldiers, they shoot down this radio soldiers fast. And I was actually selected to go to Vietnam War too. And my captain said, don't go. If I've gone there, I'll, I'll have been shot to death. That's, that's like the beginning of the Vietnam War then. And it really happened. You know, but in these days, right, the phone is so small and yet so effective. You know, back then, right, the frequency didn't go that far. And we had to communicate through the Morse code, and that was an effective communication method. And at every time, right, we had to communicate through numbers. <laughs> and the funny thing is, right, and the radio, our frequency, right? It's not only us who can hear the codes. The houses can hear it too. And enemies can actually hear it too. And basically, like with the codes, with the numbers, we can actually tell them at this date, at this time, we're going to do this. And enemies can hear it too. And the enemies hear our codes. And then they try to enter, they try to decipher, and they can't. And they put them in the same frequency. And then the enemy actually gets out of the code. You know, some people that are not good at this, right? They write down the signal sent from the enemy. And then some people, they write their codes and the enemy's codes, everything down. That doesn't make any sense at all. But then the real competent, right? No matter how many times they hear the codes from the enemy, they don't listen to it at all. Come on. You just write down exactly the code sent from the Then if you can do that, then you are a senior radio soldier. <laughs> do you understand? The spiritual life too. And there are people that are not good at it. They hear Satan's code, God's code, Satan's code, God's code. Is that right? And as your spiritual life grows up, this is meant to Satan's code. I'm not going to listen. You can discern. And if you only believe in the words of God, then definitely for sure, God is alive and He will work upon you. Amen. But then we get this unwanted interruption from Satan. That's why that causes problems. For me, I believe in the words of God. That is a lot of words. A long time ago, I was so hungry and starving. I stole many things. And then I would steal people's bodies from the farm. Potatoes from the other people's farm. Peanuts. I stole many things. I had a lot of sin. And I went to church. And as I went to church, and I stole many things, right? And one day, Jesus said, in the Bible, to the woman, to the woman called in adultery, just how he washed her sins. He has washed away my sins too. And that day, from that day, I only believe in the words of Jesus. It doesn't matter what I do. And I could see God helping me out. And that's why I say this. Never believe in this word. And do not listen to other things. Long years. Only read the words of God. And if God says that your sins are washed away, then it is true. And if God says that your sins are gone, then it is gone. And if God says that you are sanctified, then you are sanctified. And among the other stories, right? He has either the voices from Satan. Do not keep the sun. Satan get lost. Get out. Take the rope. With Taekwondo skill, kick them out. So take the 
I learned how to take on the two. So when somebody punches me, right? Before the punch hits me, and there is a movement like this. It's me like that. And while the punch comes to me, as I block it, I hit it back. You can't just hit it like this. You really have to put your body weight on it. And then you have to hit it really hard. Then it loses power. And as my fist is small, right? But then basically this is the tip of this big hammer. And if you just hit the people with the fist of one, and that's not really strong, but with a big hammer, and with the tip of it, you gotta hit it as hard as you can. And it can't get up. And you should point on the foot. Satan. That's what you gotta do to Satan. Hit it. And if the words of God work upon you, then God will become your second creation. And then you can transfer this frequency to the others. And you can transfer this signal to the other. And let us go the world. And your thought. Yeah, he was struggling with the leprosy. You know, for decades, he was going through a lot of problems. You know, when he was healed from the leprosy, how happy do you think he was? Right? And leprosy represents our sins. We all have the disease of sin. And when you receive forgiveness of sin, how happy will you be? And you, in the words of God, it says that your sins are washed away. And if you believe it, then you become the signal station yourself. And you should be able to transfer the signals to the others as well. And God will work powerfully upon you. Let us pray. Our Holy Father God, we thank you. And we are such dirty people, Lord. And we are supposed to be cursed. And our Lord Jesus came and washed our sins away. And we are so thankful that you saved us all. And all these loving families in Australia. May your words be spoken to them. Please help us believe in the words of God. And please help us abandon our thoughts. And just like none of the commander, please allow us to heal. And the family full of happiness. And a family full of happiness. Thank you, Lord. And all of us may become the signal seekers. Please help us witness about Jesus. And I pray it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.